Welcome back to the Metal Mad Podcast. And we've got tons of news here to talk about. We're going to be talking about Joan Jett and the Black Arts. So let's just get on with it. And uh, the first piece of news I want to talk about is uh, Stephen Piercy quits Rat. And um, this is kind of a kind of weird because you know I don't really know how to feel about it because I on the one hand I'm not a huge fan of Rat. They got a few good songs, but for the most part they're just kind of forgettable, kind of like every other '80s hair metal band. I like hair metal, but they they are kind of more forgettable. So. You know, I, I just don't mind it all that much. And they said that he, like, basically quits every year. But I, I think it's going to be permanent. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. The next one is the Golden Gods Awards from Revolver. And um, they had a, a live stream of it online. And uh, Joan Jett received the Golden God Award. Uh, Axel Rose received the Ronnie James Dio Lifetime Achievement Award. And, um, I've written Sevenfold won a lot of awards there, and I don't really think they deserve the win. They're not really a bad band by any means, but, uh, the last album, Hail to the King, really didn't impress me all that much, so I don't know. But, uh, you know, anyway, there were a lot of technical difficulties there. Like, you just, they were so confused, because they had no idea what was going on, and, Honestly, it almost seemed kind of um, unorganized and unplanned. But, um, you know, that's a live stream for you. That's just what happens when stuff like that happens. There's a new Fozzie song out called Lights Go Out, which is uh, a bit different from their usual stuff. You know, Fozzie is the band fronted by Chris Jericho from WWE. And Fozzie Foz is a really good band, a really good heavy metal band. Uh, Lights Go Out is um, is really catchy, you know, got kind of that beat, kind of kind of what you would hear in kind of an industrial type of mind, uh, almost in the ministry, I'd say. But uh, I wouldn't even say it's poppy. It's just it's heavy, but at the same time, it's catchy, you know. So I think this is a really cool song, and I can't wait for their album. The next one is ACDC, and uh, Malcolm Young is, has been pretty ill. Uh, I don't know what, it's like a blood clot and a stroke or something, I don't know, he's just really sick. And um, ACDC have said that they're going to continue recording music, which I really don't know how to feel about that. Because Malcolm Young is like, uh, I think he was like one of the founding members, but uh, if he gave the okay, then... You know, I mean, I can't wait for ACDC's new album because uh, Black Ice was pretty good. So I uh, definitely can't wait to see what the, they got coming. Uh, Molly Crew is apparently working on their last song now, and uh, which I really I still don't like them retiring, but hopefully it'll be a good song. And uh, I think it it was. I think they're going to call it like uh, "All Bad Things Must Come to an End" or something like that, which is a great, a great title, and uh, I'm really interested to hear it. Friday the Thirteenth sequel has been announced or a reboot or whatever. I don't know. They tapped the V8, the movie VHS director to direct it, which I'm not really. Uh, I'm not really having good feelings towards that because VHS was a found footage movie. I don't, I'm not really fond of found footage movies. Uh, I think it would be interesting and it would be something new for the Friday the 13th series, but it doesn't really need to be a found footage. It just needs to be what it's always been, a slasher movie. Nothing more, nothing less. And uh, there also will apparently be a TV series Another TV series, because they had one back in the 80s. And maybe this one will actually feature Jason. I don't know, but we'll find out. Slayer has released a new song called Implode, which is a really great song. Obviously, it's not the same band without uh, Jeff Hanman and uh, Dave Lombardo, but, you know, it's still pretty cool. 
you know, it's very thrashy. At first, it's kind of like, it has kind of that, uh, kind of that mid-tempo, south of heaven type thing going on. But then, uh, about, after about 40 seconds, it's, it starts getting cool. It starts getting to the Slayer uh, that we know and love. So, you know, they're going into the studio this summer. Can't wait to see how that album goes. Speaking of returning bands, Judas Priest is coming back with a new album this summer. Released their new single called Redeemer of Souls. And I'll be honest with you, the first time I heard that song, I was like, man, I, I don't know. The production just kind of seemed off to me. Like, it, it, it really did seem like Rob Halford's vocals were kind of isolated from uh, the rest of the song. Like, they weren't mixed in properly. But uh, now that I heard like an official release of the song, it's it sounds fine, and uh, I wouldn't say it's a great song, but it's an okay song, and it at least makes me uh, interested in um, in seeing what their new album's going to sound like, especially with their new guitarist. Okay, Queen's Reich, the Queen's Reich uh, trial has finally ended, and uh, Jeff Tate will be going. Back to Solo and the uh, rest of Queen's Reich will have the Queen's Reich name, which I agree with. I mean, I really don't care about all of this, but uh, the Queen's Reich album did sound the Queen's, Queen's Reich album, and Jeff Tate's Queen's Reich kind of just sound so. And I, I like uh, the I like the Jeff Tate Queen's Reich album called Fre- Frequency. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what it was called actually. Frequency Unknown, that's it, Frequency Unknown. I, I kind of like that one. And the Queen's Rike album, the rest of them, I don't know, it just, I don't know. I, I kind of liked it, but at the same time, the new singer's just trying to be like Jeff Tate. So I don't know. And finally, the Atari ET Urban Legend has finally been answered. And... It ended up being true. There really were copies of E.T. buried in the desert in Arizona or New Mexico. New Mexico, I think that's what it was called. What it was. And I just found that so interesting. Like, Atari actually buried copies of their game. Like, that was just so interesting to me. And, you know, it's an urban legend like you know, interesting if it's true, but I don't think people would do that, but they ended up doing it, and uh, it's just an interesting piece of video game history that will go down forever and ever, so that's pretty cool. So that's the end of the news, and it is time to play our favorite game, Shoot the Shuffle. We shuffle 10 songs on our iPod, and let's see what we got. The first song is No Sleep Till Brooklyn by Beastie Boys from License to Ill. Uh, Beastie Boys were a great band. I'm not sure if they're still together. I don't think they are due to... um... I'm trying to remember his name. I don't remember his name. I'm sorry, but... um... MCA, I think, was the name of it. I'm real not sure. I'm about to look it up. Hold on. And the BC Boys were pretty good. I really like their style. Kind of like a rock, rap rock style. Yeah, it was MCA. It was MCA. So, um, that's a good song. And that and that's honestly a good album, too. Number two is Louie Louie. By Motorhead. Yeah, Motorhead's had some good cover versions of songs like um, God Save the Queen and stuff like that. And uh, this one's no exception. It's very faithful to the original. And uh, it's just a good rock and roll song. Number three is End of the World by Cold from 13 Ways to Bleed on Stage. Cold, I think, is an underrated man. I think I've said that before. Maybe. I'm not sure, but... I think Code is an underrated band. They definitely need more attention. Uh, this is a good, dark, uh, kind of rock album. Number four, Strange Ways by Kiss from Hotter Than Hell. 
And this is a good heavy song by Kiss. They rarely get kind of to the point of heavy metal. But when they do, it's great. Peter Chris does some great vocals on here. Ace Freely, Guitar God, you know, so check this one out. Number five, R.E.M. Losing My Religion, Out of Time. Alright, this is a great song. Kind of one of the first songs I think of when I think of alternative rock or the 90s. So this is cool. Number six, In My Dreams With You by Steve Vai from Sex and Religion. This is an okay Vai album. I don't really like it when, uh, I didn't really like it when it got vocals on it. Like, uh, sometimes vocals can be okay, but Steve Vai is great as an instrumentalist, but not as a vocalist. Well, Devin Townshend does vocals on this one, and Vi would do vocals on Fire Garden, and um, really just the rest of his albums. But I do like, I like Passion Warfare. I love Passion Warfare, so, yeah. Number seven, No Reflection by Marin Manson from Born Villain. Yesterday, Born Villain celebrated its two-year anniversary, and I remember when it came out, and uh, I really like—I really, really, I really liked it at the time. Nowadays, I think it's an all right record. And uh, Mary Manson just did a song for the TV series Salem, uh, which is okay. I've heard it; it's, it might take some time to grow on me. And I've heard he's going to do a new album, which if so, I can't wait. Number eight, Sisters by Steve Vai from Passion and Warfare. Like I said, I love Passion and Warfare. Great instrumental album. And, uh, yeah. Number nine, Diner Chaos by Graham Ravel from Bride Chucky soundtrack. Uh, the score to Bride Chucky is fantastic. You can't get much better than that. Uh, this is basically the song that plays when, um, the cop car explodes, courtesy of Chucky. Everybody's just going nuts. Uh, so it's a very chaotic song, but in a good way. And number 10, Interstate Love Song by Stone Temple Pilots from Purple. You know, great, great song uh, by a all right band. You know, so yeah. And finally, we're going to move on to the main event. The legendary Joan Jett. And we are going to start with the uh, with her first album, Bad Reputation. And Bad Reputation is, it's a good album, I guess. There's maybe a couple too many covers for my taste, but uh, it's pretty good. Some of the standout songs are, you know, Bad Reputation, you know, stuff like that. Don't Abuse Me, which I think was a runaway song. First, first, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it was. Hold on. Let's see here. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it was. It could have been, but I could be wrong. But uh, anyway, other songs with a bad reputation, like um, what was that song? Uh, you don't owe me is interesting. It's a very different sound from uh, what she would obviously keep on doing. Do You Want to Touch Me? The Gary Glitter uh, cover is pretty good as well. I'd say it's even better than the original. But, uh, so yeah. So that, that it's a good album. So yeah. And the second one would be I Love Rock and Roll. And the cover of that is very uh, iconic. And it's really cool. Obviously, the title track is awesome as well. Love is Pain is great. Victim of Circumstance, Crimson, Cloak Clover. Her cover of Louie Louie is great as well. Sometimes Blues is good as well. Um, just a lot of great songs on this particular album. And so, yeah. This this is definitely an album, if you're starting out, if you just want to kind of want to see what, the first, what your first Joan Jett album should be. I'd say get get this one or Unvarnished. I think that would be cool ones to start with. So moving on, the next album is called Album, released in 1983. I kind of like to call it the Yellow Album, because uh, the cover is a yellow background with Joan Jett on it. 
So yeah, I just kind of refer to it as the Yo album. But this has a couple good songs on here. As a cover of I Love Playing With Fire, which is from uh, uh, The Runaways. I think Queens of Noise. I could be wrong, but I think it is Queens of Noise. Also, has other stuff like uh, the French song, Coney Island and Whitefish. Scratch My Back is pretty good as well. So it has some good out good songs. I wouldn't say it's a great album, but it's a, it's a consistent album. So a year later, glorious results of a misspent youth, and then this one has a cover of Cherry Bomb, which I think might be better than the original. I think uh, other songs are New Orleans. The cover of New Orleans is really good. Push and Stomp is great as well. But much like album, it's all right. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's you know again it's consistent. You know what you're gonna get, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. Now, good music in 1986. That that was a great album. You know it it's probably one of my favorite Joan Jett albums. Uh, stuff like if you if you want my love, that's that's a great song. Her cover of Roadrunner. Black Letter, Just Lust is my favorite song on the album. It's just a great beat, you know, great drums, great guitar, great vocals, everything's just great. This is uh, probably the best album since I Love Rock and Roll at the time. So, yeah. And we move on to Up Your Alley, which is really great. It was kind of during kind of that hair metal kind of era where everyone teased up their hair, kind of got outside songwriters just doing what they needed to do to survive. And uh, this one is really good as well. Along with, It's almost like they came in pairs, like good music, no, no, no. Uh, good, yeah, good music and Up Your Alley were good, great albums. Glorious Results and album were all right. You know, so it, it was almost like it came in pairs, you know, but anyway. I Hate Myself For Loving You was like the big hit song, and it still gets some airplay to this day, and it's a great song. Little Liars, a, a great ballad. Uh, her cover of I Wanna Be Your Dog is great, great as well. I Still Dream About You, You Want In, I Want Out, just like in the movies. It's a great some great stuff on there. Ch definitely check it out. Check it out. In uh, 1990, the hit list. Basically, her cover album. And uh, this has some good songs on here. Her cover of Dirty Deeds is good. Pretty Vacant by Sex Pistols. Celluloid Heroes, originally by The Kinks. Love Me Two Times, originally by The Doors. So it's got some good songs on there. Basically, if you ever heard a Joan Jett cover, you know it's going to be pretty good. So yeah. The next album is Notorious. That was released in 1992. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of think this might be her weakest album. Nothing on the album is particularly bad or anything, but it's honestly just kind of forgettable. Really the only song I can really remember is I Want You, so... And Backlash is good as well, but other than those two, there's not really a lot of uh, memorable stuff on the album. The next one, Pure and Simple, was a great album. You know, kind of had that harder rock kind of vibe to it. Definitely, it, it definitely sounds like it was recorded in the 90s. It definitely has that kind of right girl type sound to it, that alternative rock that was going on at the time. Some good stuff on here. Consumed, Go Home, Torture, Wondering You Got a Problem. A Activity Girl is a great song. So, And then uh, a lot of time passed between that. And then she released an album that was only released in Japan called Naked. And uh, most of the songs on there would eventually go on the center a couple years later. But we'll get to that in a minute. And some of the songs on Naked are pretty good. Uh, right in the Middle is pretty cool. 
science fiction slash double feature from Rocky Horror is uh, interesting as well. Kiss on the Lips kind of has this kind of industrial type um, kind of thing to it. And it's really cool. It's a bit different from Joan Jett's usual style. And it's really cool. Recover of Donovan Season of the Witch is great as well. Well, one of her best covers ever. And so we move on to Center, which is a great album. It's a great album. And, um, you know, her cover of ACDC is great as well. Her cover of Androgynous, Change the World, Fetish, Baby Blue, I mean, Turn Around, Tube Talking. I think this has some of her best songs she's ever done on here. So, uh, this is an album that I've been listening to a lot lately. So, it's definitely great. Check it out. And, uh, finally... Her most recent album, Unvarnished, came out just now. And this is probably her darkest or, if anything, her most personal album. It deals with the loss of her parents, Hurricane Sandy, stuff like that. And uh, it's a great album. The lyrics are really great. You know, standout tracks include Anywhere, the song that she did with Dave Roll. And, uh, you know, really all the songs on here are really good. And uh, it really left me wanting more, which is definitely not a bad thing, you know. I mean, I love Joan Jett's music, you know, so nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, like a lot of songs on here are good, you know, TMI, Fragile, Reality Mentality, different. So there's a lot of stuff on here that's great. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Joan Jett's music has always been good. It's always been just straight up rock and roll, you know. So, you know, I really have no problem with it. I love Joan Jett. Like, she's probably my favorite musical artist right now. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And um, so that's all for this edition of the Metal Mad Podcast. Um, Next time, we will be looking at another discography of another band that I love. And um, that band is named Aerosmith. We're going to be looking at Aerosmith's entire discography. So I'll see you then.